uh, various units. Uh, some of them are from the minister's office, uh, Pejabat YBM, uh, YBTM, and also various other departments and units, uh, bahagian getah, account, kewangan, uh, unit integrity, koko, ladder, kayu kayan, HR, um, and, and also uh, industry friends. Yeah? And uh, <clears throat> basically, it is just an update session to enhance uh, our knowledge uh, in terms of uh, MSPO and what is the status to date. Uh, I'm also grateful and thankful to the Ministry uh, for the opportunity uh, given to me uh, representing MPOCC to share as well as also to learn from you all. And uh, before I, I begin, uh, a small disclaimer. Uh, much of the information that I'm going to share is actually not mine. Yeah? And I have made uh, efforts to reference uh, the original source and therefore you can actually go back to the uh, original authors or the original uh, document uh, for reference. And as what Cik Aniza mentioned for the Q&A, uh, I'll be really happy if you can type in into the chat box and then we will take it at the end. Yeah? Um, since uh, Cik Aniza mentioned that uh, you know, this session will be a little bit more of a, a Santai session, I will present both in Bahasa and also in English uh, for the benefit of all. Uh, before we go into the details, allow me to also share a little bit about uh, me. Uh, my background, actually my career started in 1990. Uh, after I completed my bachelor degrees in agriculture, uh, I worked uh, as in, in the plantations uh, and also an, as an agronom agronomist, uh, mainly looking at rubber, oil palm and cocoa. And uh, after several years working in the plantation sector, I moved on to work with uh, several NGOs, uh, WWF and also Wetlands International. Um, and after about 10 years stint there, uh, I decided to start my own consulting company and uh, I was supporting companies uh, to become uh, certified with regards to sustainability. Um, and then also in 2015, I actually moved on to work with RSPO. Uh, I was the head of impacts there. I'm looking at uh, complaints and grievances. Uh, since 2016 till now, I'm actually with uh, MPOCC. I've uh, held a number of positions. Um, looking at uh, many areas of the MSPO certification itself. So uh, that's in brief, yeah. Um, I just want to say, uh, this session uh, will be quite heavy. Uh, so I, I invite you all to actually pay attention and also uh, absorb as much as possible. And uh, before I actually go into more details, I just want to say here at the beginning itself that uh, sustainable palm oil is basically uh, part of the national strategy yeah, for the nation in achieving the UN uh, SDGs. Yeah? As many of you all know, palm oil has actually contributed much to the Malaysian economy year in, year out. And uh, I myself have come to realize that palm oil is so, so, so important uh, for many Malaysians and also the economy at large. So for this morning, these are the topics that I will be covering. Yeah, So I will touch a little bit about palm oil before we go into the details of uh, sustainable certification of palm oil. I will also share a little bit about us, um, naturally, because uh, I'm duty bound to share about the organization that I'm attached to, MPOCC. Uh, I will touch a little bit about the scheme itself, MSPO, um, and then also the progress that have been made in the past few years. Uh, maybe, and I will also give some examples of uh, benchmarking and, and also collaboration. And I will wrap up the session with some key uh, issues and, and challenges. Yeah. So just before we, we actually start the session proper, I thought I will uh, introduce a short video uh, about MSPO. So just sit back, relax, uh, and enjoy this video for a short while. Yeah, yeah. You can't see the video. Is it visible now? Hello. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Okay. So maybe we will switch to the next slide then. <laughs> Right. Is this slide visible? You can. can you see this slide? No. Can't okay. see the slide from here. 
All right, let me try again. This is part of uh, technology, eh? wonders and blunders of technology. <laughs> Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, Mr. Lau. Can you see me and hear me now? Okay, what about still the same thing, yeah? Hang on, hang on. I'm trying again. Does this work? Can you hear me now? Can you see this slide? You can see this slide? Okay. All right, all right, wonderful. Maybe I should attempt for the video again one more time. Can you see the video now? Sustainable Palm Oil MSPO certification scheme to promote sustainable management and production of palm oil. Hello, my name is Hariri and this is my wife Rukia. We are smallholders growing oil palm from Malaysia. Welcome to my oil palm farm. I have been planting this oil palm 15 years ago. In 2003, I retired from the company, the oil and gas company that I work in. When I came back to this land, it was actually in a mess. Uh, basically, there was coconut uh, palm trees and also a mixture with the coconut trees, uh, bananas, some coffee, some cocoa, and some other vegetation. Once I decided to go on oil palm uh, farming, and because I had no full information and knowledge about oil palm, I went to the office of MPOB, the Malaysian Palm Oil Board, to help me to do my planning of the plantation. In 2018, my farm was uh, MSTO certified. What that means to me is that I am conducting the practice on the farm according to the best standards set by the world. And this is the result that you have today. So others should adhere to good agricultural practice and also to the MSTO principles and criteria so that in the long term they will contribute to the production of uh, sustainable palm oil. As a commodity, our palm oil is exported to many countries and is made into so many products. My expression is to ensure that nation palm oil is green, clean and safe. Sometimes I imagine that someone somewhere in the world is using my palm oil. The world can expect every drop of palm oil that comes from Malaysia is sustainable. And that is our commitment to the world. Malaysian smallholders rely heavily on oil palm for their daily living. The income from oil palm has a significant impact on maintaining the socio-economic stability of these smallholders. The growing of oil palm has led to the development much needed in rural areas. Kemajuan kampung ini banyak bergantung daripada industri sawit. Perkembangan di kampung ini mempunyai jalan raya untuk kemudahan orang ramai, klinik untuk pesakit penduduk-penduduk kampung lah dan kita mempunyai sekolah untuk belajar untuk anak-anak kita supaya belajar pandai untuk masyarakat dapat. 
saya kagum dengan kemajuan kampung saya ni kalau dibandingkan dengan dahulu daripada segi jalan raya kalau dulu semua jalan raya tanah merah tapi sekarang semua dah uh, jalan raya lima hitam klinik sekolah semua pun dah ada kalau dulu sekolah pun kalau tak papan atau kayu tapi sekarang sekolah semua dah batu pada asalnya sekolah ini telah ditubuhkan pada tahun 1955 dengan murid seramai 13 orang perkembangan semasa dari tahun 1955 hingga ke hari ini menampakkan peningkatan murid-murid yang datang ke sekolah ini daripada keluarga yang mana ekonominya daripada kelapa sawit hasil yang saya dapat daripada sawit ini saya boleh sekolahkan anak ketiga-tiga anak saya anak yang pertama dah lepas daripada politeknik anak yang kedua masih melanjut pelajaran di IPG Kuala Lipis anak yang ketiga sekolah di SMK di Semarawang dan apa yang saya lihat saya perhatikan ibu bapa yang kebanyakannya dapat membantu Uh, morning everyone, can you all hear me? Can you see me? Or can you see the slides? I had to stop the video just now very shortly because some of you all were not able to see it. Can you see me or can you see the slide? Wow. Okay, then uh, let, me, let me go back to the presentation mode. I'm so sorry about uh, um, this glitch because I'm also learning how to actually uh, adapt and adjust. <laughs> how about now? Can you see the slide? I can see the slide. Oh, you can see the slide. Okay. I can see the slide also, Doc. All right. All right. So the, this slide actually talks about uh, some basic, uh, some basics about vegetable oils. Yeah. So thank you, thank you for the feedback. At least I know what uh, what you all can see from your end, yeah. So I thought before we dive into the MSPO topic, I just wanted to share a couple of slides about uh, palm oil itself. And if you look at this slide on the left, um, the two diagrams, uh, the one on the left actually is comparing palm oil with other um, oils, other vegetables oils, and you can see palm oil is on the top, yeah. So in terms of efficiency, palm oil is is basically the most productive per unit area. And the, the, the graph on the right hand side, you can see is basically the comparison of inputs and outputs for some of the major oil crops. And again, you can see palm oil is a, is a miracle crop. Yeah. So in terms of uh, output and, and comparing with the energy input, pesticides and fertilizer, it is way ahead of other uh, oils. Now, this, this graph actually I adapted from uh, uh, Dr. James Fry and also Claire Fitton's study. Uh, this is quite a dated study, but nevertheless, I think it is important to know uh, that the average yields of oil per hectare uh, at the global level uh, for soya um, in, in blue, uh, where you can see the arrow, and then for rapeseed in green, and, and also for palm, uh, it, is, it is on the increase. But if you look at the last uh, 20 years or so, from 1990 to 2010, uh, the increase has not been that substantial with regards to palm. So this is also um, uh, a trend that we are noticing now, the stagnating yields for oil palm. And this actually can be seen as a, as a huge opportunity in various fields, especially in R&D and also sustainability certification to increase the yields by improving uh, planting materials, using high yielding materials, especially for smallholders, uh, reduction in crop losses, oil losses, and at the same time looking at sustainability certification. Now, at the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned that uh, palm oil sector has actually contributed quite a lot to the Malaysian economy. And these are figures that I have managed to compile uh, thanks to MPOB and also the ministry. Uh, which actually look at some of the key indicators for the year 2018-2019 and the percentage change. Uh, and you can see the, the percentage change in blue uh, is actually showing up and red is down. Uh, this is natural for many of the uh, uh, commodities. Uh, it is not actually fixed, it is uh, fluctuating. But nevertheless, I think the, the take home message here is that palm oil is here to stay and uh, it is actually a huge uh, uh, contributor to the, to the nation. And especially if you look at the number of smallholders who are directly uh, 
depending their livelihood and income is almost a half a million. And in total, I think more than three to 3.5 million uh, people in Malaysia depend on their direct income from uh, palm oil. Now that brings us to the next topic uh, with regards to certification. Uh, why certification is needed and also uh, how does this actually contribute to the overall economy and also how it addresses sustainable development issues. Uh, no doubt every crop has its uh, goodness and also its downside and, and the same with palm oil. Uh, palm oil is also heavily criticized uh, for its environmental and social impacts in terms of deforestation, uh, human rights violation, uh, various labor issues and environmental uh, impacts. And, and one way to demonstrate uh, good agriculture practices is through MSPO certification. And that is why the government has actually made a firm stand uh, to actually implement MSPO as a mandatory certification to differentiate uh, Malaysian certified palm oil from other uncertified or unknown uh, palm oil. Um, so this, this one slide actually summarizes the, the justification, the need for MSPO and therefore uh, for it to be continued to be relevant. So I move to the next topic. Uh, I'm also conscious of the time that we have. Uh, I will just share with you a few slides about us, uh, MPOCC. Uh, we are actually incorporated as a, as a company, a non-profit company back in December 2014. So we are now almost uh, six years old. Uh, we are governed by a 13-member board of trustees uh, comprising people from various uh, backgrounds with regards to oil palm uh, through the industry association, uh, the ministry, MPOB, uh, academic R&D institution, smallholder organization, uh, NGO, and also civil society. Our objectives are very clear uh, with regards to the way how we govern our business, basically to operate a sustainable palm oil certification scheme in Malaysia. Uh, Secondly, is to engage with all relevant parties. And uh, this includes uh, uh, trade association, industry association, institution of higher learning, NGOs, etc., etc. And also, most importantly, to, to develop and also establish a mechanism for certification for uh, palm oil and, and also to make sure that the requirements uh, of these standards are complied with. Uh, for your kind information, I would like to invite all of you all to actually uh, log on to our website and, and there will be a pop-up box for you to get regular updates. Kindly uh, fill in your details if you haven't done already uh, to actually get updates from us from time to time. Um, at the same time, we have also launched a um, certification um, portal for us uh, to actually tell the world with regards to our status of certification nationwide. And uh, this uh, information is updated live uh, and, 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 and all details with regards to the state breakdown, state by state breakdown, the entities, uh, the location, etc. You can actually find it there. Now I go into the next topic with regards to MSPO certification. As I mentioned earlier, MSPO is basically a national agenda. It is a homegrown scheme. Um, I'm also getting messages from people saying that the meeting is full, that they are not able to join in. I think there is a limit in terms of number of people. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize for those who are not able to, to sign in. Uh, <clears throat> and I was just about to say that with regards to MSPO, we, we want to ensure that no one is left behind uh, with regards to palm oil sustainability. And there is also very strong legislative um, um, what shall I say, backing with regards to MSP of implementation nationwide. And uh, with the mandatory implementation of uh, MSPO starting this year, 1st January 2020, uh, MSPO certification is basically integrated as a requirement for the renewable of MPOB license and also new license application. I think for this, uh, the market needs to support the Malaysian efforts to, in taking a quantum leap on, uh, on MSPO. And of course, MSPO certification, basically we want to transform the industry yeah, from where they are right now to, towards becoming uh, relevant, uh, sustainable and certified, green and, and clean. And of course, uh, we support the United Nations concept of leaving no one behind, particularly the smallholders. Yeah? And, and because many of the smallholders uh, do not have financial support and also human resources for certification, the government is fully backing uh, MSPO certification in, in Malaysia. 
this slide is a little bit crowded, but what I just wanted to share, share that uh, the UN SDGs, which has the five pillars of sustainability, people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership, uh, has also relevant uh, elements of MSPO certification already embedded. Uh, and therefore, we feel that the MSPO certification on its onward journey, actually, it is a demonstration for the nation to actually show that we are in support of UN SDG goals. Okay, this slide is basically uh, a, a one-dimension diagram of how a national scheme uh, is basically uh, implemented. On the top left is uh, MPOCC as a scheme owner or as a governing body. Um, and and uh, on the top right is basically the national accreditation body, which is uh, Department of Standards or Standards Malaysia. Uh, we work closely with the accreditation body and uh, to run the scheme uh, using third party independent audits, uh, we actually carry out uh, uh, a number of uh, things. One of it is basically to, to actually uh, notify accredited certification bodies. Uh, and, and here you can see that the certification bodies are able to actually carry out certification for oil pump management and also supply chain uh, right at the bottom. One of the things that we have actually emphasized is with regards to peer review process, which is an uh, independent peer review car being carried out for all uh, oil pump management certification uh, reports. Now to carry out uh, certification, we actually need uh, certification bodies uh, that operate uh, nationwide and uh, MPOCC allows for third party certification bodies, basically Malaysian registered uh, CBs or certification bodies. Uh, you can get the updates from the link which is shown at the bottom of the slide here. And these, these are the uh, CBs yeah, that uh, can actually operate MSPO. And we encourage and we welcome more Malaysian based uh, certification bodies to come forward. There are a number of uh, CBs who are not listed here. They are in the pipeline to become uh, accredited. Um, and please uh, uh, touch, get, get in touch with us from time to time if you need more information about uh, the certification bodies. In a very simple way, the auditing and certification process is actually shown in this diagram. It can take anywhere between three to six months, depending on how the entity is uh, in compliance with the requirements of the standards. So it starts off with application and then followed by a site audit by the, by the CB. And if there is any corrective actions uh, which are raised, uh, there, there will be certain timeline given for the non-compliances to be closed out. And finally, the, the certificate is actually issued. Uh, this, this slide is actually available from our website. You can actually download it from the info kit. At the end of this uh, presentation, I will share uh, some of the resources where you can get uh, more details. Yeah. Now, for certification, just like uh, many other certification schemes uh, uh, in the world, uh, I just want you to sh uh, remember this simple uh, triangle diagram where on the top is basically the standards, uh, bottom left is the, the system, and then accreditation. So this simple uh, triangle actually explains to you how uh, MSPO uh, operates in, in Malaysia. Uh, and all three actually needs to uh, be in, in, in synchronized uh, approach. Now, this, this slide is also a bit crowded. I'm, I'm sorry, but I just needed to capture uh, the whole, uh, what shall I say, value chain of uh, the palm oil in, in Malaysia, starting from the left, where you have the small, medium and large uh, plantations or estates, uh, and also the small holders, which are independent organized. Uh, all their crop will eventually end up in the mills, which are then uh, uh, converting the fresh fruit bunches into CPO and PK, and then it goes down the value chain uh, through refineries, crushers, etc., etc., right down to consumers. So I must say that um, the MSPO certification basically covers two big uh, areas, as you can see on the top there: all pump management certification and supply chain certification standard. Um, also, I need to flag here that uh, the dealers and the collection centers currently are not certified, but uh, in the standards review, we will actually uh, look at ways and means how they can be actually brought into the MSPO uh, standards for certification purposes. Also, another area that uh, we are also uh, interested to explore is with regards to palm oil uh, biomass uh, uh, standards and certification. 
Now, in all this, uh, there is also plenty of uh, other operators such as uh, KPSM, the Koperasi Penanam Sawit uh, Mampan, yeah, which is operated with the support of MPOB, and more than 6,000 members, uh, smallholder members, are actually part of this. Uh, uh, cooperatives nationwide uh, who are also uh, included in this certification. Uh, now, when we talk about uh, MSPO, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the triangular diagram, first thing that you need is basically um, the standards. Yeah. So here you can see that uh, I've divided it into two parts on the left, which is OPMC. Um, and on the right is SS, SCCS, yeah? And the, the left-hand side, you can see there are a number of uh, standards, uh, which are actually emulation standards for uh, sustainable uh, palm oil certification, which is basically a management uh, system certification, which covers smallholders, uh, organized smallholders, independent smallholders, uh, large plantations, and, and the mill. And then on the right-hand side, which is actually the the supply chain uh, certification standard that was developed by uh, MPOCC through a broad stakeholder consultative approach. And now these standards are now being subject to review and uh, we'll share a little bit more details uh, a little later. Uh, this is part and parcel of a scheme where standards are continuously improved and reviewed from time to time. Now the elements of uh, the MSPO standards uh, actually broadly covering seven principles currently and and these principles, in my personal opinion, actually define uh, sustainable palm oil uh, production uh, in Malaysia. And they cover uh, commitment, transparency, legal requirements, uh, social responsibility, the environment, uh, biodiversity, best practices, and also development of new plantings. Uh, I will touch a little bit about the government's uh, new policies with regards to new plantings in a slide later on. Now, when you talk about uh, supply chain uh, certification, uh, we have uh, eight uh, requirements and, and the details are actually uh, available in this document. Basically, it's management system and also for traceability purposes, uh, this standard was actually launched to complete the value chain for certification in, in Malaysia. Now, for uh, the certification system we also have a logo usage and in this case uh, we are looking at uh, two different types of uh, supply chain models one is segregation and mass balance for malaysia and the details are actually available on our website for for use if you if you like to actually uh, get further information please kindly contact us uh, at this point, um, may I ask if anyone has any, any questions or any clarification on, on this before I, I jump to the next topic? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. I'm halfway through the presentation and I'm looking at the time, which is also halfway. <laughs> uh, so I thought maybe I'll just uh, take a break, take a pause a little bit. Uh, were you all able to follow my presentation and, and my voice is clear? If you can just give me a thumbs up and you can also see the uh, slides clearly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. So we have a, a hodgepodge of different kinds of questions ranging from uh, GHG, looking at uh, FFB collecting centers, um, percentage change for export for MSPO, CSPO, uh, MPOCC's view in assessing GHG. Yeah, because we have a mixed bunch of people who are coming uh, from different areas. Thank you. Uh, we are currently developing GHG consideration. Yes, uh, thank you, Ben. Um, MSPO licensing renewal, MSPO certification, please elaborate um, and so on and so forth. How is the MPOB license integrated to MSPO? Okay, great. At least I have an idea. You all are still there. You all are active. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you for this interaction. I just wanted to make sure that you all are with me, following me. Um, can you see this slide now?
Can you see this slide, please? I, I just wanted to get an answer. Yep, can see. Okay, thank you. So um, I just wanted to share a, a little bit about the, the progress that has been made thus far. Yeah. Um, if you look at this um, um, diagram, it's actually showing uh, major milestones. Yeah. Uh, since the launch of the standard back in 2013, and as I mentioned, only in 2014, the year after MPOCC was registered, and uh, officially uh, MPOCC uh, came into uh, operation in 2016. But in 2015, the ministry actually made an announcement that uh, voluntary implementation will, will take place. Yeah, uh, 2017 was also quite a, a busy year. And as you can see, that uh, that was the year where the government actually made an announcement that M MSPO will be actually implemented on a mandatory basis. And also we uh, convened the technical working committee uh, through a broad stakeholder consultative approach uh, covering all, um, what shall I say, relevant stakeholders uh, in Malaysia uh, to come together to actually look at uh, standards developments and standards review. Um, 2018, uh, we actually rolled out the MSPO incentives. Uh, we have a, a specific page on our website uh, to cover MSPO incentives, uh, to actually receive, process, and also approve uh, incentives to actually spur the uptake of MSPO. This is another uh, great initiative that the government has actually uh, come forward to, to spur the, the uptake of MSPO certification. At the same time, with the help of MPOB, uh, uh, the Tokyo Olympics actually uh, uh, committee, yeah, uh, the, the Olympics, uh, which was supposed to be scheduled this year, which is now actually moved to next year, uh, they actually have um, sustainable sourcing uh, guidelines, yeah, and in that uh, MSPO was actually considered recognized, yeah, as one of the uh, certified sustainable palm oil for the use uh, during the games, yeah. And also in 2018, we launched our supply chain uh, standard, and also we started the process for standards review, which normally takes about one to one and a half years. 2019, last year, uh, we actually embarked on a number of initiatives, uh, collaboration with uh, the China Green Food Development Center, which I will share a little bit more in, in, in detail later on. Um, and then also the drum up and the run up to, to become, uh, to make MSPO scheme as mandatory. Uh, towards end 2019, the MSPO trace, uh, basically, um, which is actually a, a certification uh, traceability and also transparency tool was launched towards end of 2019. Uh, and of course this year, <clears throat> full implementation of uh, MSPO is actually done uh, with the support of uh, MPOB, as I mentioned earlier. And at the same time, of course, we wanted to promote uh, the uptake of MSPO both nationally and also internationally. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately with the COVID, uh, we have to actually re-strategize our approach for 2020 and, and, and beyond. So just to show you the achievements over the past uh, many years, uh, we have actually received quite a lot of good support from the industry members. And, and this histogram actually shows on a year-to-year -year, uh, basis with regards to MSPO certified areas. And this actually is accumulative. Yeah? It includes uh, smallholders and estates. And, and you can see that uh, the growth has been almost uh, doubling yeah, every year. And um, as of, uh, last month a few days ago we have close to about 4.5 million hectares uh, certified uh, nationwide uh, together with that uh, we have also got good support from the palm oil mills there are 450 over mills uh, nationwide uh, which are basically the key for the production of uh, crude palm oil or certified uh, sustainable palm oil uh, it has also shown uh, an increase and as of of, uh, end of last month, we have more than 390 meals that are already certified. So these are actually just a snapshot of uh, more details uh, that will be coming your way. Now, this is another huge uh, effort by the Malaysian government, and I think uh, we must uh, congratulate and also appreciate uh, the government to actually take steps uh, to actually look at uh, the entire uh, value chain for uh, traceability and also transparency for um, the palm oil sector in Malaysia, which covers from the seed production right up to in manufacturers and, and point of uh, export. So with regards to 
MSPO, we have actually developed uh, the MSPO Trace, which is actually one of the modules that will be integrated in the overall E-Trace that is going to be developed by MPOB. Um, just a snapshot of what actually it comprises, the MSPO Trace, basically it covers a number of things, uh, data with regards to the audit reports, uh, and of course there are certain issues with regards to the, the quality of the reports, which we, we will be actually addressing from time to time with regards to improvement. Um, and at the same time, geolocation features, yeah, so this is another thing that we have embedded, uh, traceability as I mentioned, and also we will merge with the MPOB E-Trace. Over and above that, we have also added other modules with regards to complaints, uh, monitoring of uh, the ACBs, and also looking at logo application from time to time. Uh, another new areas that we are actually looking at is uh, the simple verification scheme. Uh, currently, we are working with uh, some Japanese uh, stakeholders, and this is under development. Uh, for your information, <clears throat> this uh, groundbreaking innovation actually uh, supports transparency, traceability, uh, sustainability, legality, and accountability. Yeah. So for accurate MSPO data, uh, starting November last year, uh, it is all available live and is free for download. And it is a near real 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 time database for everyone to to see. And this is also in the spirit of uh, transparency for Malaysia. Yeah? Uh, this is just a, a screenshot of the MSPO trace, the landing page itself, and you can see there are a number of uh, <clears throat> other uh, areas that we will be constantly improving and developing. I mentioned that uh, there are uh, there are already uh, work underway with regards to the standards revision. Yeah, at at the, at the moment, uh, and a number of um, what shall I say committees are actually in place. Uh, starting from the top, the National uh, Steering Committee, which actually sets the policy direction for, for Malaysia. Uh, we as a scheme owner, we also uh, represent, uh, uh, also represented in that um, committee. The standards owner basically is Department of Standards Malaysia, and together with uh, Department of Standards, we also are the Secretariat for the Standards Revision Process now, which has already kick-started uh, since last year. And uh, we have to follow through the national uh, process uh, to make sure that uh, the eventual product is actually uh, going through the, its due diligence before it is endorsed as a, as a formal uh, Malaysian standard. Now, one of the things that uh, I would like to share with you is basically the tax deduction uh, that is available for MSPO, uh, unlike other all palm certification schemes. Uh, because this is a national scheme, and, and therefore, the uh, Malaysian income tax uh, is clear with regards to el el eligibility of tax breaks for clients and the certification body. So, um, there are a total of 18 uh, accredited uh, certification body schemes under Standards Malaysia, of which uh, MSPO uh, is already embedded part of it. So, uh, these details, you can actually get it from uh, our website and also from the Department of Standards uh, with regards to tax uh, deduction. Now, in the past uh, couple of years, uh, several assessments uh, were conducted, uh, independent assessments. I, I will just share with you one uh, sample. Uh, it was just done by um, Neocarbon because uh, this, this assessment was actually to look at the gaps between MSBO and ISCC, which is actually the International Sustainability for Carbon Certification. And you can see the, the number of points uh, on the, the diagram on the right. Uh, we are <clears throat> not there yet, but at the same time, uh, there are certain areas where the study has actually uh, highlighted that we are uh, better than uh, ISCC, such as uh, in the areas of stakeholder participation, uh, in the areas of SEIA, and also FPIC. Yeah? And of course, no doubt, uh, um, as, as you all know, there is uh, always room for improvement, and these are the areas that have been proposed uh, to be considered. Uh, during the review of the MSPO standard, which is underway now, and this will be actually incorporated uh, as, as part and parcel of the new revised uh, MS, uh, MSPO standards uh, for Malaysia. Now, with regards to international collaboration and, and recognition, um, we have to actually take a, a national uh, approach to this. 
and we have initiated a number of uh, bilateral uh, discussions at the G2G level. Uh, this slide actually shows the, the signing of the MOU between uh, MPOCC and the China Green Food uh, Development uh, Center. Uh, and this is basically to look at uh, how uh, MSPO and the China Green Food Certification can work together. Uh, right now, we, are, we have already completed the MOU and we are actually looking at the pilot study uh, for interested uh, entities uh, to sign up and to actually uh, have a, a combined checklist for both uh, the schemes. And this is something that we are excited uh, this year, and, and it will it'll continue uh, in a big, big way uh, in the years to come. Uh, also with, with Japan, uh, with the support of MPOB, we have actually started a number of uh, engagements with certain uh, industry players there. And also we have met a number of uh, industry associations, and there is a keen interest with regards to palm oil biomass certification standards. And uh, upon the request of the Japanese industry, we are actually uh, embarking on this uh, interesting and exciting uh, uh, initiative. And as you can see on the bottom left, uh, according to the Japanese uh, Environment, Trade and Industry Ministry, the renewable energy industry in Japan is worth uh, several trillion yen. Yeah? Because uh, as you know, the Fukushima power plant uh, incident has actually created a huge uh, impact uh, with regards to energy uh, consumption in, in Japan and they are actually moving towards uh, renewable energy uh, options and MSPO actually is, is, a, is a way forward. Sorry, I was just uh, taking a drink. Just need to dry, uh, my, my throat is getting dry. <clears throat> so with regards to um, international corruption, I continue with a few more slides. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, MSP certification was adapted as a, as a tool, as a sustainable sourcing code for palm oil uh, for the Tokyo 2020 and uh, Paralympic Games. Yeah, But now uh, it is now delayed to next year, uh, as you all know, because of the, the COVID-19. But nevertheless, uh, we will continue. And also we have actually uh, uh, carried out uh, certain initiatives to look at uh, the simple verification system, as I mentioned just now, which is actually an extension of the MSPO trace for certain key markets. Uh, with the Dutch, also again with the MPOB support uh, and also certain uh, industry uh, initiatives, um, there are a number of uh, efforts actually being put in place to actually uh, look at um, uh, sustainable and climate smart uh, palm oil production, specifically for smallholder support. Again, uh, this is another interesting uh, initiative which actually was spearheaded last year. Um, and <clears throat> we hope to continue uh, this year with uh, more uh, activities uh, on the ground. Now, for a scheme to be actually um, uh, implemented and also uh, fully uh, embraced, there are a number of uh, enabling measures yeah, that needs to be in place. Um, and of course, uh, I must uh, acknowledge MPOB in this instance that uh, they have actually taken into account uh, the interests of smallholders. Yeah? Uh, and, and also with regards to legality requirements, uh, the, the legal action that will be taken, uh, to, which includes non-renewable of MPOB license for all palm growers. Uh, that are not MSP certified commencing first uh, first January, and this uh, has already been uh, publicized uh, at the national level, and also, uh, in while um, the carrot and stick approach is now coming into place, uh, the the government has also put aside yeah, uh, certain amount of funds for uh, support of MSP certification specifically for smallholders, yeah, uh, for training. Yeah, for latihan and then also penyediaan PPE, peralatan perlindungan, and also uh, various other uh, efforts that are needed for smallholders to come on board. This is actually a huge task uh, at the national level, and it is impossible for just uh, one uh, entity or one, what shall I say, organization uh, to actually spearhead this uh, operation. It requires uh, the spirit of cooperation and collaboration from all uh, players. Yeah? to actually implement this uh, in, in a sustainable and a long-term uh, manner. 
Um, I also must say that uh, in 2019, uh, a positive set of new policies towards uh, sustainable development of oil palm sector was spearheaded by the ministry then. Um, and, and these policies uh, uh, will continue to be in place, yeah, basically to cap the national oil palm uh, planted area, uh, looking at stricter conditions for peatland development with regards to oil palm and also uh, banning the conversion of uh, permanent forest reserves or hutan simpan kekal to oil palm or even other agriculture crops. And in the spirit of transparency, which I emphasize a number of times, is basically making the maps of uh, oil palm planted areas available for public access. So these are also all uh, positive, what shall I say, developments uh, on, the, on the Malaysian front to actually uh, tell the world that we are here, we are relevant, we, we would like to do this uh, in, in a, in a forward-thinking approach and we look forward to more uh, collaboration from uh, all players. Now, for as I said, that uh, for all uh, schemes to operate, we need uh, relevant stakeholders, and, and 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 I would like to take a few minutes to actually acknowledge and thank all the stakeholders who are involved in one way or the other uh, for MSPO in the past uh, years. And I feel that um, MSPO is basically the the binding factor yeah, that brings uh, everyone together, just like a glue, uh, like elephant glue. It, it is basically a common binding factor as, as seen as a catalyst for change and transformation of the oil palm sector. And of course, you and I know a multi-stakeholder consultative approach is not easy. We, we need to balance the views and the demands uh, of sometimes very diverging uh, points of views of all sectors, the private sector, the smallholders, the government, the NGOs. Uh, it is not easy, but we will still do it anyway. And uh, as you know, many consumers are not aware that they use uh, palm oil. Yeah, and uh, MSPO is a place uh, to start for us to be aware uh, that we actually have a palm oil. It is sustainable. There are certain standards uh, in place, uh, and no, no standards are perfect. You know, it is always subject to continual improvement, and it is not cast in stone, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Now, I would like to touch on a few uh, key issues and challenges that the MSPO certification um, has been uh, confronted with. Um, one of the major challenges, and I, and I believe this is also um, a work in progress, is basically implementation of MSPO for independent smallholders yeah? and also the SMEs, which are below 500 hectares. Uh, many of them uh, do not have uh, sufficient manpower. Yeah? Uh, in terms of technical, in terms of uh, knowledge, yeah, and they are scattered all over the country. Yeah, uh, they also have a low level uh, of education and awareness uh, in terms of understanding. Um, there's a lot of hand holding that is actually needed. Uh, at the same time, they also need some financial support, and that is why uh, certification costs will be seen as a burden if the government actually uh, does not support. And, and that is why I think Malaysian government has actually uh, put in place the relevant uh, incentives, uh, the, the relevant, uh, what shall I say, the human resource uh, allocation for uh, smallholder certification. Uh, this is the, I think it's a huge uh, quantum step, quantum leap for Malaysia. Uh, and I think this will become um, uh, a domino effect for many other countries uh, all over the world to actually follow suit with regards to smallholder certification to learn uh, from the lessons that uh, we have actually gone through. Um, and also, I feel we will become, uh, what shall I say, the uh, catalyst for other national standards uh, in this region, whether it's Thailand or Philippines. Yeah? And we are also getting some requests from some of these um, uh, industry players from different countries uh, to actually put in place their own national standards. Of course, I cannot uh, avoid but talk about uh, a little bit on COVID because uh, this is the current, um, what shall I say, challenge that is being faced. Uh, and therefore, we as a scheme owner, we also had to actually respond uh, to this. And uh, uh, in March, we actually uh, uh, announced uh, through a circular on our website that the postponement of audits uh, is actually allowed. And subsequent to that, we also put up certain updates in April, um, 
with regards to the conduct of uh, remote audits and at the same time for uh, ensuring that the field audits uh, will be followed suit uh, once the pandemic is actually uh, removed. And all this information is actually available on our website. So please, please uh, feel free to, to, to come to our website regularly to actually get uh, relevant information. And of course, uh, uh, compliance to all the SOPs, yeah, pematuhan kepada semua SOP, SOP yang diwajibkan yeah, oleh pihak kerajaan bagi semua kaki tangan yang terlibat dalam skim pensiulan MSPO adalah penting dan uh, tidak harus diabaikan. Yeah. Uh, I have a few more slides before before I conclude and I'm looking at the time. I would like to stick to the time of uh, one hour. Um, other challenges apart from those that I have highlighted, uh, basically it is uh, listed here in, in summary point of view. One is uh, global acceptance and recognition. As I mentioned, MSPO is basically a homegrown scheme. And now that we have built uh, MSPO up to a certain level where more than 80% of the planted areas are actually certified. Now we have to take it uh, globally. And, 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 and uh, so that is another challenge now we will be facing from now onwards to actually promote uh, and also gain acceptance from the global market. And also this is something to do with uh, consumers, yeah, the public uh, at large, their awareness, uh, their demand and their a public outcry with regards to sustainability and also specifically for sustainable palm oil. Nevertheless, uh, year in, year out, the costs incurred by uh, industry players uh, is always on the rise. And, and of course, uh, certification is also seen as an additional cost. But I would like to invite uh, players not to see this as an, as, as an increase in cost, but actually as, a, as an investment, which will have a payoff in the long run. Yeah? And similar to other commodities, uh, price fluctuation is something that we are not able to actually, um, what shall I say, be in control uh, because this is determined in the market and it's a free market, the forces are different. Uh, one new area that we will be actually exploring is looking at biomass. Yeah? So currently, uh, there is no biomass certification uh, within the scope of MSBO. And that is another new area because of uh, increased demands with regards to biomass certification. And of course, our continued role with regards to mandatory certification, we will not be able to manage all by ourselves. We are actually uh, beginning to talk to many other uh, inspection and enforcement agencies in Malaysia to further strengthen uh, the mandatory certification nationwide. Uh, so this, this will be my last, uh, second last slide, yeah, with regards to uh, today's uh, presentation. As I mentioned just now, MSPO is a national uh, sustainability certification for the oil palm industry, uh, which covers best practices, traceability, legality, and all, all of these areas are actually embedded in the MSPO certification. Uh, I mentioned also that our standards are now being reviewed uh, through an open, uh, transparent, multi-stakeholder pro process. And as what uh, Malaysia has always been committed towards uh, the uh, global agenda with regards to certification and also the UN SDGs, MSPO, I would say, is here to stay. It will be the brand for Malaysian palm oil, uh, which actually proves that it is green. It is certified according to certain standards and it will become a uh, a brand for Malaysian sustainable uh, palm oil. Now, what um, I've just given here is basically some um, information um, links, web links that you can actually um, go to to get more information. And uh, at the same time, we will be constantly updating our website from to time to time. Uh, one of the things that I would like to share with you is with regards to the incentives. Yeah. To spearhead MSPO certification, uh, the government actually kindly put aside a certain amount of funds for incentive uh, for those who have uh, started MSPO certification before 1st January 2020. They are eligible for, for incentives. Uh, and, and we are still processing a lot of applications uh, that we are receiving on a daily basis. So please bear with us from, uh, from that, that aspect. So with that, I would like to thank uh, the organizers and also 
the uh, participants who are here today. Uh, I would also uh, encourage uh, everyone to actually come on board uh, to actually play a more active role in uh, Malaysian uh, Sustainable Palm Oil uh, Certification. Uh, with that, thank you. I, I hand over back to uh, Cik Aniza from the Ministry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me start from the beginning, just to be fair. Uh, this session will end at 11 o'clock, am I right? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, at the beginning part of the presentation, there was a lot of uh, glitches and hitches. <laughs> I, I apologize for that. I'm also not so familiar uh, with the use of IT wonders and blunders of IT. <laughs> right, so one of the questions is how much is the percentage change for export for MSPO, CSPO? Yeah, and uh, this is uh, the information that is actually uh, being captured now in our MSPO trace. Uh, I'm not able to give you offhand the actual figure, but uh, I, I feel the, the volumes actually uh, right now uh, will be unfair for me to just give you off the cuff, uh, but uh, allow me to, to take some time to actually review the, the, the information before I, I, I share. Uh, some people asked for the slide presentation. Um, I suppose that that will be made available. Uh, how to reduce GHG when the scheme allows planting on peat? Does it cover FFB collection center? Yes, uh, currently, the scheme, uh, the standard actually allows for uh, planting on peat. And at the same time, uh, one of the additional conditions that have been put in place is to, to look at the best uh, management practices for planting on peat that is published by MPOB. Uh, no doubt, uh, peat is a contentious uh, area with regards to greenhouse gas emissions. And we are fully aware of this. And that is why in the technical working committee and at the same time, the uh, working group, we have actually uh, made sure that the relevant experts are in place uh, to revise the criteria and indicators with regards to greenhouse gas assessments and also reduction uh, in the revised standards. So I assure you that this will be further uh, looked at uh, with regards to the review of the MSPO standards. Yeah. Yeah, so again, uh, with regards to assessing GHG, yes, uh, once the standards are already uh, in place, then there will be certain specific uh, guidelines that will be uh, published uh, to actually support uh, the requirements of the standards and, and, and compliance in that matter with regards to assessing GHG. When will the MS uh, going to be revised? Uh, it is undergoing a revision right now. Uh, we have started the process late last year. And of course, uh, due to the COVID uh, in the last uh, couple of months, there is certain uh, shift in the timeline. Uh, but please feel free to, to contact uh, the Secretariat to actually get a revised, um, what shall I say, gun chart with regards to uh, the implementation of the standards review itself. Originally, the target was uh, by end of this year, we would like to have the, the revised version of MS 2530, uh, actually, 530. Uh, but that may be a challenge, yeah, uh, because, of course, uh, we prefer to have face-to-face -face, uh, stakeholder consultations. And, of course, in certain remote areas, uh, the challenge can be to actually have a good uh, internet connection. So we are trying to see what are the better uh, options that are available to actually uh, make sure that the process that we are actually doing uh, caters for the needs of uh, all, all stakeholders. Uh, we are currently developing GSG consideration in the MSPO standards review. We know we know rec we now recognize the need for this and working towards developing it. The MSPO standards review process is currently ongoing. Thank you. 
Um, MSPO license renewal and MSPO certification. Please elaborate effective date procedure exemptions. Um, MSPO is a certification, it's not a license. Yeah, so the certificate that is issued is actually basically valid for five years with an annual uh, surveillance audit uh, being conducted. Yeah. Um, Currently, uh, the procedure actually follows the Department of Standards uh, requirements uh, and we follow what are the requirements that are stated for accreditation of certification bodies uh, for MSPO nationwide. As in the previous question, how is the MPOB license integrated to MSPO? Yeah, so MPOB license uh, renewal will require uh, the, what shall I say, the show of MSPO certificate, yeah. So because the MPOB license is a legal regulatory requirement on an annual basis, yeah. So for that license to be renewed every year, you need to have a valid uh, MSPO certificate, yeah. So if you do not have, then the license will not be renewed. And in this instance, the uh, requirements under the law will actually come in place, yeah. Uh, and that will actually mean uh, the MPOB uh, enforcement will, will actually kick in with regards to maybe uh, uh, reminders or a warning or, or even compound. Yeah. So those are the things that will happen uh, on, a, on a mandatory basis yeah, from now onwards moving forward. What are the difference between RSPO and MSPO? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether I am the right person to actually uh, address this, but nevertheless, uh, both schemes are designed to actually improve uh, uh, agriculture practices from the palm oil sector. Um, can you all hear me? Is it clear? Yeah, okay, thank you. So I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, rolling on with uh, I'm rolling on with uh, with the questions that are, that are posted here. Uh, so yeah, so both schemes are present in Malaysia uh, together with ISCC uh, with regards to sustainable certification for palm oil. One is global, the other is uh, uh, local and national. Uh, one is voluntary, the other is uh, mandatory. <clears throat> so both schemes uh, have its um, peculiarities and similarities. Put it that way. Uh, Please, please uh, contact us for further details on, on, on this matter. <clears throat> what is the status of MSPO oil for the deferred Olympic or uh, Tokyo Olympics? Yeah, so uh, uh, as of now, the recognition is actually specifically for the Tokyo uh, uh, Olympics and Paralympics uh, 2020. And because that deadline has now been uh, postponed to 2021, uh, it stays uh, until the games is over yeah and of course the recognition is basically specifically for the the use of the tokyo olympics because the tokyo olympics uh, is actually i think a game that they they wanted to make sure that it is sustainable yeah in the whole operation of the the tokyo olympics itself uh, not just for palm oil but for other sectors as well for timber uh, for paper and pulp as well yeah is it important for dealers and collection centers to be included in the MSPO audit progress? It may be quite a simple paper procedure to start, but important for them to be there. Yes, we have uh, actually acknowledged and um, recognized that the dealers and collection center play a very, very important role, uh, specifically with regards to smallholder crop that are coming in. And currently, uh, they are the missing link in the MSPO uh, audit process. And uh, we are actually taking steps to incorporate uh, uh, the dealers and collection centers, we are actually uh, having uh, active discussions with them in our working committee and working group to ensure that uh, what are the relevant requirements uh, that can be incorporated into the revised standard uh, for audit pro uh, purposes uh, uh, moving forward. What actions are taken by MPOCC to ensure traceability under MSPO? Uh, one of the big steps that we did uh, was to actually launch the MSPO Trace app which is available for download. And uh, from there, you can actually trace uh, from the refinery to the mill right up to the ladang, yeah, to the smallholder itself. So, and I think this is a huge step for a nation to actually prove uh, traceability 
uh, right up to the point of origin from, from the farm itself. Yeah. So what is the fine if not certified in 2020? <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is a big question everybody has been asking. Uh, what if I don't do? What, what will happen? Yeah, And of course, this is a due process that uh, MPOB will have to uh, put in place because uh, they are the regulatory body with a parliamentary act in place. Uh, we are a scheme owner. We do not have any enforcement uh, power. Uh, and therefore, I think this question should be adequately addressed by MPOB. But nevertheless, uh, please contact us for further details. Yeah. We need a wide variety of audit reporting. We notice a wide variety of audit reporting format between the CBs, particularly on the FFB supply source. Can MPOCC set the minimum requirements for this? And standardize this. Yes, I, I, I agree. I acknowledge this point of view. Uh, <clears throat> end of the day, MSPO and many other schemes are basically uh, man made. It is not uh, perfect. It is always subject to continual improvement. We are also receiving quite a number of uh, inputs uh, with regards to the quality of audit reporting. We have also alerted a number of CBs with regards to improving their uh, report writing capability, their formatting, and also the contents. Uh, we will actually uh, put in place what are the minimum requirements from time to time and to further standardize it. Yes, I, I, I acknowledge this point of view. Thank you. What is your opinion about inclusion of independent smallholders in MSPO? Because according to OPMC data, only 24.3% of independent smallholders is certified. Yes. Right now, uh, <clears throat> to actually have a uh, what shall I say, the entire nation, yeah, which comprises of uh, all uh, sectors, uh, the big boys, the medium holders, the small holders, uh, to come on board. It is unfair to actually have one finishing line. Yeah? So we need to have a phased approach. And that is why uh, MPOB is actually working very, very hard on the ground uh, to actually uh, make sure that uh, small holders are not left behind. And uh, they will be actually, um, quote unquote, the legats. Yeah? which uh, needs more hand-holding, uh, more, what shall I say, support in terms of human resource, in terms of knowledge, in terms of training. So it's not just uh, smallholders that uh, uh, have to raise the bar, but also the other industry members will also have to come in play. And, and, and that is why I think it is important to have a win-win situation here uh, because smallholder yields and smallholder productivity is always uh, below uh, the national average and that is why it is important for uh, all industry players to actually uh, encourage and also support independent smallholders and one way to tell the world uh, that smallholders are not left out is to include them into MSPO certification and I must say that from the word go back in 2013 when MSPO was uh, the, the standard was launched we had a specific dedicated standard for smallholders, yeah? And I think that is something that we need to uh, give a pat uh, on the back of all those uh, industry players and POB, Kementerian, et cetera, et cetera, who actually come together to actually develop a standard for smallholders uh, specifically. What are the common report quality issues uh, are there? Uh, it ranges, yeah, basically with regards to uh, the, the, what shall I say, the command of language itself. Secondly, with regards to uh, technical details, sometimes accuracy, uh, sometimes uh, auditors tend to gloss over things. And, and also, uh, what is now, I feel, important is to actually strengthen the um, uh, process through the, uh, what shall I say, the, the internal review panel of the certification body. Yeah, to actually review the audit report as a first cut and then the second cut is through the peer review process itself uh, before it is actually published. Yeah, So no doubt we, we can have certain um, measures in place but this is a check and balance that is subject to continuous uh, improvement. <clears throat> Back to GHG questions, I'm referring to indicator 4.5.4.1 for both plantations and mills. What is MPOCC's current stand? Is MSPO just copying ISCC or RSPO in terms of assessment? Well, the indicator is there uh, as of now under the MS2530, which was published in 2013. Um, no doubt, certain indicators are clearly spelled out and certain indicators, uh, what shall I say, 
quote unquote a compromised yeah because we are actually uh, looking at a, a broad stakeholder uh, requirement yeah so uh, and these areas which uh, have been highlighted you are right actually uh, through the stakeholder consultation through the working committees there are uh, certain people uh, who are experts in these areas who have come on board to, to volunteer their time to actually further uh, strengthen uh, the, the, the standard. So allow me to say that this is part of our continual improvement. Things can only get better and uh, we are on the road towards uh, continuous improvement. So MSPO Trace can report the amount of material purchased, sold and claimed by a certificate holder. Currently, this is uh, something that we have deliberated about, but we are not able to actually publicize it because this is something uh, between a uh, willing buyer, willing seller, a business uh, operation, and therefore we, we will refrain from uh, actually putting up this information with regards to uh, sales and purchase. What is the status of the documentation of workers and with and uh, withholding withholding of identification uh, documents yeah so as you know uh, in the palm oil sector uh, several hundred thousand workers are actually employed uh, nationwide uh, we emphasize on legality requirement so all workers must actually have the relevant uh, documentation with regards to um, um, what shall i say working in the plantation working in the mills then if there is certain non-compliances, uh, as, as you mentioned, with regards to withholding of identification uh, documents, please, please, please kindly contact us with relevant uh, information and also uh, lodge a complaint officially on our complaints portal, uh, giving information, solid information, so that we can actually take action on this matter. And, and we view this with, with, uh, with a lot of uh, concern and also it is a serious matter. For contractor, supplying workers for field work, should they be considered uh, in part of the certification? Uh, within the MSPO standards, there are certain requirements for outsource um, activities, and this includes contractors. Still biodiversity, not HCV. Uh, this is another uh, aspect that we are, what shall I say, work in progress because um, this is a national, um, what shall I say, perspective that we have to take into consideration and not just, uh, uh, what shall I say, blanket spray uh, with one uh, approach. And we have actually consulted the relevant experts uh, from the various ministry and the various agencies with regards to uh, whether it should be high conservation value or high biodiversity value. Uh, nevertheless, I think this is a decision that will be made through a consultative approach and not uh, unilaterally just by uh, MPOCC. Is MPOCC going to register consultants for social biodiversity or environment? As I am seeing copy paste reports, Tokyo Olympics, what is the quantity estimated to be MSPO? Thank you, Mr. James. There are a lot of uh, interesting uh, points here. Um, you're right, at the early days, we actually uh, put up a list of consultants uh, who are out there who are able to support uh, the operators, the farmers, the entities to become uh, uh, MSPO certified. Um, but again, we had to remove uh, that because there was some uh, abuse yeah, uh, with regards to endorsement or even registration. So we do not register uh, consultants. I have to emphasize that. Uh, Tokyo Olympics, what is the quantity estimated to be MSPO? Um, this is again, uh, what shall I say, a, a postulation kind of a question. I, I won't be able to give you a clear answer for that. Will the quantity be shared with other sustainability schemes? Hang on, is this a, what is the quantity? Oh, what is the quantity estimated for MSPO or will the quantity be shared with other sustainability schemes? Yeah, again, it depends on the, the uh, Tokyo Olympic Committee itself. I'm not sure how is their criteria with regards to uh, a shared responsibility, whether they're going to you know, have an equal slice of cake for all uh, MSPO, RSPO, ISPO. I'm not sure. Uh, it, is, it is not uh, in our hands to actually uh, decide. So less than 100 acres license will be renewed, even though not certified. Uh, again, this is a question I think you should pose to uh, MPOB with regards to license, yeah? 
Good to hear that these policies will be preserved for the new government. So all palm planted on hutan kekal as of today is okay. Um, again, this has to be verified uh, by the certification body if there has been any encroachment uh, into uh, hutan, kekal, hutan simpang kekal and, and therefore uh, the legality requirement, the land tenure and the land permit must be fully verified before it is certified. Uh, Again, uh, we place a lot of emphasis on independent certification and that is why the certification bodies uh, have to play a more active role. Will MPOCC be having similar meetings for the trace? I'm not so sure about that. Are there reviews for plantation sites to be categorized under part two? Um, I'm assuming this question is um, revolving around the standards review itself, where the Part two standards uh, basically is for independent smallholders. Um, maybe you're referring to part three, which actually has uh, plantations and organization, uh, organized smallholders. Yes, we are actually looking at how to further uh, categorize it and also further uh, clarify the uh, various uh, entities in, in, in Malaysia with regards to standards and certification. In terms of declaration of planted hectare, certified hectare, title hectare, if the title is 100 acres for all palm, but he planted 50 acres for all palm, the rest is fruit orchard, how much should he be declared a certified area? Again, this is a, a question that keeps popping up again and again. And also, I think it is important for the certification body to look at the title area and the planted area before a decision is actually made with regards to certification. When can we start for site audits? Yeah, so again, we have to follow closely the decision by the Majlis Keselamatan uh, Negara with regards to uh, site audit. Yes, on-site audits will, will actually uh, come in place. But at the same time, right now, I think emphasis has to be put uh, on, on, on regards to, with regards to the safety yeah, of, of people. Uh, who is the organizer, MPOCC, MPOC, MPOB? I'm not sure, sure what is this. You have three only, maybe you can check MSPO trace now and present how much. <clears throat> what is considered new planting in principle seven? What is the cutoff date? For now, the principle seven uh, in the current MSPO standard doesn't have a cutoff date. Yeah, and that is uh, something that we will be actually uh, further tightening and, and also enhancing with regards to the uh, review standards. And I really welcome all uh, experts and uh, key players who are sitting in the uh, committee and also in the working group to actually uh, have a, an open, transparent and also healthy discussion with regards to this matter. Any new SOPs introduced on surveys? I'm not sure what is surveys. Mr. Chia. <clears throat> Sorry, continue from above audit or oh, post MCO. Yeah. So for with regards to SOPs uh, post uh, MCO, we will have to actually uh, address it uh, as, uh, as, as we take on board uh, people's movement back into the field. Uh, of course, third party independent certification is always dependent on on-site audits. And now we have incorporated uh, remote audits as also uh, part of the uh, fulfillment requirements. But nevertheless, uh, there are certain weaknesses in, in remote audits, I, I, I must confess, um, <clears throat> as, as much as we would like to continue with the, with the on-site audits, we will take it uh, as, as it comes. Yeah. Can you tell us about MSPO MPI efforts in getting more international bodies, countries to recognize MSPO? Yes, thank you. Uh, this is an ongoing work in progress with, with, uh, through the ministry on a G2G approach where we will continue our engagement with uh, all uh, international, what shall I say, organizations uh, abroad and also uh, at a country to country level to actually accept and also uh, endorse uh, MSPO. Number of people have asked about the recording. 
plan uh, Dr. Sanat do MPCC plan to regulate the consultants. Unfortunately, within our mandate, we are not able to regulate consultants. Um, our scope is very clear with regards to sustainability certification. Uh, to develop and operate a credible certification scheme in Malaysia is, is our mandate and therefore we will not be able to regulate uh, consultants. Uh, develop adoption of remote audits for future procedures as in make the remote audit more robust. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, that last point with regards to remote audits, I, I fully agree. And uh, moving forward, as what uh, the Prime Minister has actually emphasised, the new normal, uh, this will be some of the new things that we'll have to look at, new technologies, uh, new approaches, how to actually conduct audits um, to make it more robust, to make it more transparent. Yes, that's all. I think uh, that's the end of uh, the, the, the list of questions that I, I can see. I hope I have adequately answered. I'm thirsty. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sana. Very useful. Uh, very good presentation and uh, interaction. This is Chiu, uh, CEO and POCC. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Regards the, uh, the question on the uh, remote audits and uh, field audits, we have actually issued uh, circulars on our website and posted uh, and sent to all uh, the certification bodies, allowing remote audits, but also postponement of field audits, uh, not excluding field audits, uh, as mentioned. Uh, field audits are an important component of uh, the uh, oil palm uh, plantation management certification. Uh, the postponement from three to six months. Eh? So, but we will be updating the, 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 the MPO, MPOC guide, guidance uh, uh, soon, uh, pending further announcements by the uh, by the government. So that is uh, the, the status as uh, I can report to everyone. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, for your active participation. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chu, for that clarification and, and also um, uh, additional information. I, I truly appreciate that. And I, I also would like to acknowledge all those who have been on this call uh, to actually continue uh, engaging with uh, MPOCC, MPOB and the Ministry with regards to regular updates uh, because this is not something stagnant. This is a continuous uh, evolving process and and from time to time, please uh, do check in with us uh, to actually get any updates on uh, what are the new developments, what are the new initiatives that we have uh, we have in plan. Moving forward, I think uh, MSPO uh, will become the precursor. Yeah, uh, that, that, that is what I would like to say uh, in, in summary uh, for other nations to also follow suit with regards to demonstrating good agriculture practices and sustainability certification nationwide. Thank you. I hand over to Encik Muhammad Anizam, uh, the Secretariat. And I really, really appreciate uh, this opportunity to share. And I learned as well. Yeah, we are, we are fine uh, because um, in the spirit of uh, sharing and learning, you know, uh, and also transparency, we are, we are okay with that information. Um, apart from that, I also want to inform uh, those who are on the call still because not everybody is well versed with the topic of uh, palm oil and also uh, sustainability certification. There are a number of, uh, what shall I say, publications uh, 
available, you know, uh, for everyone to actually enhance their knowledge. Yeah, and this is not just uh, uh, the only uh, documentation. MPOB publishes their uh, annual reviews and also uh, plenty of journals, magazines, you know, updates. MPOC. Uh, common trend also so please uh, in the spirit of continual learning and, and enhancement to get to know what is going on in the industry to keep in touch yeah uh, so please 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 uh, read and and also keep uh, keep active yeah thank you thank you so much Over to you, Chianism. Something we say, we say, Okay. All right, see you later again. Bye bye. <laughs>